Hello, this is Professor DRB, and today we'll be learning to draw this skull and crossbone icon in Adobe Illustrator using the Object Tools and the Shape Builder tool. When I designed this icon, I started with a source, a medical illustration, um, a vintage medical illustration, so that I could get the proportions of the skull fairly close to an actual human skull. And then I analyzed the shape of the skull and created a series of ellipses to give me a kind of a geometrically simplified skull. And that's how we're going to be drawing um, our skull today. You'll notice over here in the layers palette that I've set this up with a number of layers. And the layers with the italic titles are template layers that are non-printing layers. And the layers on top are the layers that we'll be actually drawing our illustration in. So let's turn off our finished one. And I'm just going to turn the template layers on one at a time. So I need to show my guides because we have a lot of guides here. Uh, and to make these two ellipses here, we choose our ellipse tool, which is hiding under the rectangle tool in your object tools. Let me go into the skull top layer. That's the layer we'll be drawing into. And we've shown our skull top template layer here, but we're going to draw into the skull top layer right up there. And these crosshairs show you where you can start drawing to click and drag and match the ellipse on the template. Why don't we set it to down here, swap, fill, and stroke. So we've set this to a black stroke with no fill. It's a good place to start. Stay in the ellipse tool here. Now we're going to draw the smaller ellipse. Just click and drag. If you're not sure that you've been 100% accurate, before we do this next step, you can select your two shapes and use your align tools. Make sure you're set to align to selection and align that to selection. And now we go to our shape builder tool, which we'll be using a lot today. And this is a wonderful new tool that came in in Illustrator CS5. Both of our um, shapes are selected here. And I hover over and you can see a sort of a grid appears. When I mouse down and I just drag over this, it unifies my shapes. And you'll see how that's worked when I turn my template off. So that is really kind of great. So now I'm going to turn on the template for the mandible or the jaw. And I'm going to hide the skull top that we just drew for the moment and go into the mandible layer. So Making sure we're in our ellipse tool, we can go to this first set of crosshairs right here, click and drag, and get our large ellipse. And then we can go to our second pair of crosshairs right here, click and drag. Get our smaller ellipse, and this is going to form this bottom part down here is going to form our mandible or the jaw, but I need to get rid of this top part. Um, and to do that, I'm going to create a trim shape. I just turned on this layer here, mandible trim, so that I can see it. And I'm going to stay in my mandible layer and I'm going to go to stay in my lips tool here. Starting with these crosshairs, I'm going to Try and match that blue dashed line trim shape. I want to make sure I've been absolutely accurate. I can select all of these and use my align tools to make sure they're perfectly aligned. They're still selected. My shape builder tool. And the Shape Builder tool can either merge shapes or it can delete shapes. And you'll notice as I hover over here, 
that my cursor has a little plus next to it. And if I hold down my Option key or my Alt key on a PC, that plus turns into a minus. That means it's going to delete any shapes that I drag over. So I'm just going to drag right down here and delete all of the shapes that I don't want. So let's go and delete our template. If I turn my skull top back on, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So <clears throat> if we look at our finished thing here, you'll see I have to trim these two rectangles out of the side. So in order to do that, I'm going to turn on my template layer side trim. And we're going to use the Shape Builder tool again to trim out those sides and get rid of whatever it is that we don't want. So going to my ellipse tool and starting just at the crosshairs of the grid here, I draw an ellipse, go to the selection tool, and now I'm going to use my rotate tool right here, hold on my option or my alt key, click once, and I just want to rotate this minus 18 degrees. Okay. Now I can move that into position here. Looks like mine was a little bit bigger than it should have been, so make it a little bit smaller. And um, underneath my rotate tool here is the reflect tool. I'm going to put the reflect tool on my center guide here, hold down my option or my alt key, and click. Vertical is correct. Copy. Back to my black arrow, my selection tool. Select everything here. Shape Builder tool. And now, holding down my Option or my Alt key, I click and drag. I click and drag. I just click to get rid of that. And there's my basic skull shape, all completed. So that's quite good. I'm going to lock this. Um, actually, uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, lock these two layers for the moment. And the next thing you want to do is the teeth. So I'm going to turn that template off and turn on the teeth template. So let's zoom in so we can see what we're doing. Now to make the teeth shape, I want to use uh, the rounded rectangle tool because the ellipse tool is just not going to quite work for me. So that's just above the ellipse tool in the object tool suite. Choose rounded rectangle and I'm going to go into the teeth trim layer here and just click once. And here are the settings that um, you should specify. Width 8 point, height 30 point, and quarter radius 4 points. And just click OK. And that should give you a tooth shape. So you can just drag that into position for the first tooth. And holding down your Option key to make a copy, you just click and drag it up into the position of the second set of teeth. And now you can just go Object, Transform, Transform again, or Command D. And that will give you your third tooth. Holding down my Shift key to select all three of my teeth here. Now returning to my Reflect tool. I'm going to hold down my Option or my Alt key, just click right in the center, exactly on that center line. Make sure it's set to vertical, and click Copy. So going over to my Layers palette here, I'm going to unlock the Mandible and the Skull Top layer. Select with my Selection tool, my black arrow, all of those shapes. And then use my Shape Builder tool. Once again, with the option of the Alt key, 
clicking and dragging. As I'm holding down my option key, it's going to delete rather than merge. So you can see we're very, very close. Hit V to get back to my selection tool. You can see we've got our basic skull shape. Um, the next thing that we need to do, I can just hide this teeth trim layer. It doesn't really have anything on it. Is I'm going to turn off the visibility of my teeth template. I'm going to turn on my features template. zoom in on this, kind of see what we have going here. And uh, back to my ellipse tool. First, I want to draw this green, this blue shape rather, my eye ellipse. And then I'm going to modify it a little. It's not really necessary, but I want to give my skull a slightly different look than just a completely symmetrical ellipse. So I'm drawing that blue shape there. And I'm going to take my direct selection tool and click off. That's my white arrow. And this allows me to do a little bit of fine editing. If we kind of turn on our skull template here, you can see that the eye kind of, I guess we call them eye holes of this skeleton, are a little bit irregular. And I've decided I, I kind of want to show that on my skull. I want to give him a little bit more of a human expression and have him be completely and totally symmetrical. So I'm just going to adjust this around. And yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. Um, then I can select it with my selection tool. Go to my Reflect tool, hold down my Option key on that central line, and copy. Turn off my skull here. Uh, actually, let's look at the skull one more minute, because you'll see that the nose hole has this kind of dip in the middle. And I've decided I want to show that to make my skull look just a little bit more realistic. So going back to my features, I choose my ellipse tool, start at my crosshairs, draw my ellipse, and um, if I choose with my direct selection tool, that allows me to choose individual anchor points. And right now I have a smooth anchor point, which has these two handles. And I want to convert that into a corner point. And that's very easy to do. You go to your pen tool suite here and choose the very last one, the anchor point tool. And if I just click once on this anchor point with the anchor point tool, you can see that that converts my smooth point into a curve point, which is just what I wanted. So I'm going to click off. I'm going back to my direct selection tool. I'm clicking off, and now I'm just going to choose the two central anchor points, and I'm going to drag these down. I can hold my shift key if I want to make sure it's straight. Down about to there. Making kind of teardrop shape. And all I need to do now is get this little point here. Um, I don't have enough anchor points to make that happen, but there's a very easy way to get Illustrator to add them for me. If I, I went back to my selection tool and I selected my shape, and under object half, there is a command add anchor points. And that added two anchor points between every other anchor point. So that's convenient. Now, if I just take my anchor point tool and I click on this middle anchor point back to my direct selection tool, grab this and just move it up. And now by dragging 
these control handles down. I can get just the shape I'm looking for. You can keep those symmetrical. It'll kind of keep your um, design symmetrical. So really, we are there. We only have a very few things to do left. And I'm going to select my skull shape here. I'm just going to give it a fill color so that we can see what happens in the next step. Right now, I want to punch my features out here, my eyes and my nose, so that they'll be transparent. And what we want illustrators to do is create what's called a compound path. And our handy dandy shape builder tool will do that for us. First, we need to go to our selection tool and select all of the shapes that we would like to affect. Choose our shape builder tool. And now just one click on each of these shapes, and I have punched out my eye and my nose holes. Last, we'll make our crossbones. So let's turn on our crossbone template here. Zero in on it. First, I'll make the bone choosing my rectangle tool, and I'm going to make sure I'm drawing into my crossbones layer here. And drag. Hold my space bar a little to reposition that a tiny bit. Ellipse tool. And drag using my space bar a little to let me reposition. V to take me to my selection tool. Option or Alt Shift down. My little bone ends. Now I'd like to give a tapering look to this bone because I think it's going to look too mechanical. Um, so if I select this, I can go again to Object, Path, Add Anchor Points. And what that did is it added two anchor points here right in the middle. And I could just grab those and drag them down to give my bone a little bit of a taper so it won't look quite so geometric. Oops, sorry, wrong tool. Back to the selection tool. I'm going to select my two ellipses. Get my reflect tool here. Hold down my option or my alt key. Click on this center and click copy. So that's pretty easy. We just select everything here. Go back to our shape builder tool. Two, three, four. Selection tool. If I can hover outside, I can just rotate this. Turn off my template there. Reflect tool. Holding down my option or my alt key and clicking on the center. I can just click copy. And there we are. I'm going to group my two crossbones here. Object group. And Move them up a bit. And now I think it's fair to say we get a black fill and no stroke. I think it's fair to say, let me hide my grid here, that we have created, and I'll hide my guides, a great looking skull and crossbones icon. And if we go back to our original, we can see it's kind of true to the proportions of an actual human skull. So thank you for watching, and I hope to have more icon building tutorials as time progresses.